mm-hmm. one of the crossovers with uh, Gary's list, The Wire. I think most of it I watched in 2009. This is sort of going chronologically rather than... Because Gilmore Girls started in 2000, but I didn't start really watching it till 2004, and then sort of caught yeah. up with it. So The Wire, though, um, oddly, very much started like Gary. Everyone was raving about it, rented it from Love Film. Just the DVDs just sort of sat lying around, never really got round to watching them, sent them back. Tried like the first two or three, I think I downloaded them. And then mm. I went back, I think one three five really hooked me. Bought all the bought one season one to four quite cheap, I think I remember, and went through those really quickly. I think in two thousand nine was when they showed it on BBC two, if you remember. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, they did do So I watched I think some of season five on BBC two and then the rest I rented from Love Film, so it sort of came full circle there. On your list, you talked about um you know the the way it sort of developed as it went on and i think the themes that they brought in every season but they kept the original cast members on so the cast grew every season and yeah but there was a core wasn't there yeah there was a core cast but then you say that i mean season four which i would say is my favorite my uh, favorite too yeah dominic west hardly in it there's episodes where naughty's not in it at all well but i like that about the wire. he goes back to being the uniformed officer doesn't he in season four well, does, what was good yeah. about the wire was the fact that they didn't have to have this reliance on checking in on what people were doing if they weren't crucial and to that's what i was saying about um game of thrones that they do that even though you know, they keep checking in on these characters who aren't doing well. Very much. Yeah, one of my favourite characters is Carcetti, yeah. uh, the mayor. Yeah, I'm uh, surprised you didn't by... mention that, the, po- the political element. No, I think element, it kind of right? went out of my head because I, 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 there was Agent so Gillen. Going on. Yeah, doing an amazing American accent. And I think that the, the following of him going from politician to mayor and mm. beating out some of the people that were in it is, is one of the better storylines in the later yeah. series. There are so many great characters, so many great cast members. This was a critically acclaimed one that took me a while to get into but when mm. i did i understood mm. the the importance of it some of my favorite cast members i think clark peters is lester freeman i think that's an amazing character and yeah. i think he, he went on a journey throughout it and i can't remember the actor's name but the on who plays bubbles um i think that yeah. character there was oh, just andre the, royo that's it <laughs> it has switched <laughs> it, no, I've got it, the has shifted because a lot of it as you say at its heart, it's a cop show, the wiretaps and everything like that. But I think uh, one of the things that makes it different is having this character like Bubbles, who's this drug addict, who's all like an informer, and he goes through a journey. I think his story in the final season is the reason to watch that final season. because I his, will, I his, will. His redemption storyline, I think. Is I, I, I think season five is still good. The journalist stuff is quite good. The the dodgy journalist played by Thomas McCarthy, who recently directed well, what, What's interesting Spotlight is that David, David Simon, oh, really? who wrote the series, was a journalist. To the as was Thomas time. McCarthy. As was Thomas McCarthy, yeah. yeah. Who played so, the dodgy journalist and then went on to direct an Oscar-winning film about journalists.